now we'll have Joanne who will talk about the liberated, liberated learner. And uh, for those who don't know, it's been featured on uh, Terry Green's uh, podcast, uh, Getting Air. Uh, I do suggest it. I'll post it on Twitter uh, associated with uh, this talk, but I, I think she'll talk about it and uh, specifically about the, uh, the funding that has been uh, through, but uh, really empowering students uh, through collaboration with students as co-designers. So. Merci, merci. Hello, everyone. I'm really happy to be here. I always wanted to come. I'm just going to play a bit of music for it to start. Oh. Can you... Wait, wait a minute. Hang on. <laughs> I might have to ask for some assistance. And Oh, there we go. There we go. We're settled. Okay. There. All right. So that little bit of music wasn't just any music, it's called lo-fi music, and um, I don't, if you're familiar with lo-fi girl on YouTube, so it's L-O-F-O -O girl on YouTube, so it's this intentionally imperfect, low-hum, um, hip-hop music that is supposed to help our frontal, frontal lobes of our brains focus um, and help put our mindset to focusing. So I know many students at McMaster, actually I've talked to them and listened to Lo-Fi Girl and while they're studying and it's supposed to help. So this is also one of the many elements that students helped design as part of the Liberated Learners Project. So all of the students who are in this clip right here, um, we're part of the project, and there are Seneca College, a college in Ontario, students in the independent music program. So they created our own beats to study to um, using that lo-fi music. There were many other elements that, um, that students were involved in, but this is one of the, I think, the most fun one. Um, Go forward. And my, my co-presenter, uh, Terry Green, is not here, as you may notice. Um, he is doing the most Canadian thing ever in this picture, playing pond hockey um, in Peterborough, Ontario, which is in northern Ontario, which is a lovely place to live. But one of the, uh, one of the issues with living up there is when there's a storm, the, the, we call it hydro in Ontario, the power or electricity goes out. So he has no power right now where he's living, so he's unable, he was going to join by Zoom, but so he's not able to, to join, unfortunately. But um, if you've met Terry, you know he's an amazing guy. He'd be way more funny than me. But um, if you want to uh, check out his podcast, uh, as was mentioned, it, it's, it's a wonderful podcast called Get in Air. The link to it is there. I also posted the slides on the pre-telc system so you can get to all the links. Um, but Terry is, is really so, uh, sad that he can't be here. He usually is a great, he's a big open ed advocate, as you can see by his Open Pedagogy podcast. So the, how did the, this is a, a lot of information, but I thought instead of creating a bunch of slides, I'll just take you where we, we go with this Liberated Learner Project through links. And uh, it was, actually came out of a project from eCampus Ontario, which is a hub in Canada for the province of Ontario for the 45 colleges um, and universities and Indigenous institutes. And we do a lot of open education projects, a lot of collaborative projects. There's a lot of, fortunately, government funding for these projects. And one of, uh, one of the projects, I think around five years ago, that was um, created with many people, including Terry and Alan Levine, actually, who's one of our amazing behind the scenes people for um, OE Global, was Ontario Extend. And it is an open suite of modules for educators on how to become better uh, tech-enabled teachers, so there are, you can see there are the, the six modules there. When you get all of them, you become an empowered educator, so it's a, it's a scaffolded way of becoming, this, getting this like master badge and being an empowered educator. So we had a lot of great uptake from educators across the province on this program, and Terry was the one who thought, why don't we do a version for students? How to help students become better, more empowered, um, digitally literate online learners. Good timing with the pandemic and everyone switching to online learning, so uh, we decided to do to apply for some funding through the through the province. And the funding at that time was called the Virtual Learning Strategy. And the link here will take you to the Ontario Open Library, which has all of the resources. You can see there's that number 700. I know it's going up because of this funding. I think there were more than 
400 that are being added from this recent round of funding. Lots of open projects to take and use and adapt for your own context. One of which being the Liberated Learner Project. We also had um, Terry and, uh, is from Trent University. I'm from McMaster University, it, which is in Hamilton, Ontario. Um, we had other collaborators from uh, Windsor, University of Windsor, um, Cambrian College, Seneca College, Brock University. I'm missing one there. Um, Cambrian, Brock, Seneca, Windsor, Trent, and myself. Yeah, that's good. And so each institution had a, a lead, as in a full-time teaching and learning professional, but we also had a, a great team of students so that we had most of the money that we received from the funding was used to pay students for their work on the project. So to kick off this project, we looked at the, the, Ontario, um, the original modules from the educator version and thought, okay, we're just gonna make, we're gonna make student modules. Then we thought, after talking to the students, we thought, is this really what they need? So we decided to have a design sprint. So we had a week long design sprint um, and over 200 students participated. Um, we received 99 what we called wicked problems. So those are, you know, those tricky, sticky problems where you might not necessarily have a clear cut solution. So I'll show you a little bit what they ended up looking like. So here are, this is another wonderful Terry Green project here. So here's a lot of the projects that the students came up with, how they were motivated when the dog ate my focus. <laughs> I'm a procrastinator. I don't like group work. I don't feel heard. I, I'm not motivated. I don't know how to take notes. And so there was a whole bunch of different stories that the students generated. And what we did was kind of theme them and, to, and come up with the modules that worked, um, kind of captured all of the stories that we heard. I'll show you a little clip too of the, let's see here. I think this is, oh, hang on. Right here, so just, it kind of better illustrates what the, um, what the uh, uh, design sprint and creation of wicked problems was. That's here, I think it's right about here. My wicked problem stems from the struggle of always saying yes. There's a stigma that goes along with studying. All throughout undergrad, I was able to float by in school because I majored in a subject. Have you ever felt like you were trying to live your life inside Wonderland? Filled with I found that my phone was an extreme distraction that often inhibits my ability to pay full attention. I started my educational journey after having three children. It was challenging. At some point, I would want to rage and just smash my laptop. The amount of workload given after The biggest struggle that I faced in the most recent academic year was that it was difficult for me to transition from doing school to science. I overcame this problem years later. I can confidently say that I'm really, truly learning. So as you can maybe tell, reading these stories was important quite empowering and motivational for the project team as well. We really wanted to try to help these students. So that how is how we came up with our four modules, which are the learner, the navigator, the technologist, and the collaborator. So the students were involved in the formation of the design, but they were also involved in all of the content development. We, did, we used Pressbooks to create the modules and host the modules. Um, we developed H5P interactivities. I know there's a session on H5P, I believe, tomorrow, which would be wonderful. Um, we also had st uh, students from graphic design programs um, design the look for the, um, for the, um, for the, hang on, let me find it, for all of the materials within the, within the press book. Sorry, I didn't have that completely bookmarked. Um, and then we're also working with a group of students on doing a French translation to the project. So that's how the students really were involved from the get-go. And 
we had a wonderful team. So if we, let's take a look at what the uh, typical learner, what their journey might be for them if they're participating in this. You really can dip in and out as you would like because some students don't have the same problems as others. Um, so this is how we envisioned it. So we have our first module on the learner. So this is more about strategies and this is the University of Windsor team and students developed that, how to improve learning. Then we had collaborators, so how to be a better collaborator, enjoy collaborating, appreciate group work, know when to, um, when to be able to feel confidence and, and not feel imposter syndrome. Navigator is, you know, a lot of students come to higher ed for the first time, not only as a first uh, a new student to higher ed, but also new to online learning. So how to you navigate all the systems that are, are aimed to support you if you can't find them and technologist, which is about using some of the technologies to enhance your learning. And then all four of them, each of the modules do, are badged, so you would have this, uh, if you complete all of them, we envision that you would be a well-rounded online learner. So we also have, you could take all the modules at once, or you can do this takeout menu, which is again an H5P branching um, interactivity that our students develop. So prompts that make you consider what maybe what pieces of the project would be better for you than others or might, what might be more suitable for your learning. So you can check what is your main concern. Maybe my, I don't know how to create videos and I want to learn how to do a podcast. It will direct you to the section of the module that is about podcasting. So you can really customize it. So that was a good use of H5P branching for that. I'll take a look at the module too, and we'll go back to that video here. I think it's, we'll look at the technologist, just to demonstrate what it looks like. The technologist module has three main components and one sort of mini component. And the three main components are all about teaching students how to create digital artifacts. So we go into video editing, graphic design, and audio editing. And sort of the, the point is not to get bogged down in the details, mm -hmm. not to uh, create something that, you know, is career oriented, but really just something quick and just delivering the basics so that a student can come in, kind of finish the module, and then they can create a really nice flyer or something, or, yeah. you know, the basics of audio editing. It's born out of this trend we see in uh, pedagogy that's been around about authentic assessments. One of the challenges that arise is that instructors are like, students don't know how to do this. I don't know how to help students do this. Do they have the skills to create a video? Do they have the skills to create a podcast? Is it fair that I expect them to? So I think create something to kind of fill that space. So that's an example so our... of all of the modules. The video that is in the link for this uh, presentation can go into a deeper investigation of all of them. Um, so basically, um, this is the project. We, used stu we had students involved in all, not only in creating, but also in evaluating the content. And each module had um, activities, uh, one or more activities in them. And all of the students also completed those activities. So they were used as exemplars for other students who are who we're looking to engage with the Liberated Learner Project. So now we're about spreading the word. This is here and now, look, and we really would love to see other institutions use and adapt um, the content in our project, use and adapt the process that we took in, in, in involving students right from the beginning and shaping the content. Um, so I just wanted to thank you for your time. I know that we're running out of time. We're looking to my illustrious facilitator over there. But there is the bit.ly link if you do want to check it out. The Pressbooks landing page is bit.ly uh, slash learn with style. And uh, thanks so much. Uh, I guess we'll take questions after. Thank right, you. Since yeah. I yeah okay. Well, we, we do have a few minutes for. Okay. Does yeah. I... So if you have questions, yeah. we do have the, the microphones here. I'm sure you have some. <laughs> I knew I could count on someone. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Gino from South Africa. Hi. Um, so how do you deal with students who, who enter into this process from sort of different levels of competence? That's a really good question. I think uh, 
from the development side, we had that representation from the students. So we, we had students who were grad students, students who were just starting their first year of college, uh, multidisciplinary students. So we had those voices in the mix to kind of create that. And we also acknowledge at the beginning that this was this product, project was um, created by people with different perspectives. The voice, voices may change throughout and we're trying to have at least a touch point for you to think, okay, I see myself in this person. But yeah, and I think um, that branching scenario that I showed where you actually can ask, answer some of the questions, you can kind of get down to the more personalized, individualized content that you need. So, I, <clears throat> sorry, I'm Dominique Sheffoldun, I am from Ontario and I live next to you. Yay. So we're gonna have a talk, it's nice to meet in France. Yeah. Um, I like your idea about the students uh, developing their own OER. Now my question, because I have a similar project in school boards in Ontario, how do you make the link then from the students to the teachers? Because you want the teachers now to support, to scale those, I guess, opportunities. Yeah. Is there any planning on engaging the instructors as well? Yeah. Yeah. Or the students mentoring younger students? That's a really good, I, the, la, the latter piece that you just mentioned about students mentoring younger students, I don't think we've considered that, so that's, <laughs> that's a great phase two of the project. Um, but the, as far as the instructors or teachers engaging, we have had, we, we all, all, because it was a multi-institutional collaboration, all six institutions gain, um, connected with their student success center or their student support services um, mm -hmm. in embedding the content in those, as your, as, as first year students, as students are entering into university as part of that transition. Um, and we also know that um, some instructors who, like teaching and learning centers, most of us came from teaching and learning centers. When an instructor comes to me, for example, and says, I wanna do a podcast in my course, um, I don't, like, I know how to do it, but I'm like, well, there's already some great instructions in this module you can take and adapt it for your context. So we have those kind of mechanisms embedded where we are, in, in, including it into our existing programming for instructors. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. This is very enlightening and uh, interesting. Congratulations. Um, I want to ask, how do you integrate this in the curriculum of the students? How does it count towards whatever qualification yeah. they are aiming at? Uh, well, we intentionally don't at the moment. It's more of a self-service that the students, as they're coming into online learning can do. So that's why we connected with the student success centers. So it's not a requirement that they complete the activities so far. But I, as, as instructors start to use the content, then I can imagine where, you know, that podcast example that I gave, we have a podcast assignment that means you must read this section of the module or complete the module and then produce this deliverable at the end as far as an assignment goes. Excellent, thank you very much. Thank you.